That was stupid. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, it is 10 o'clock. I am so darn excited to be back doing another I Love Tools. Yes, we've been carrying on laughing and chatting because we all need that in the world right now. So let me just tell you a little bit of information. Uh, We love I Love Tools because we learn great stuff. We get resource links and a handout where to buy it. We get inspired. It's all for free. And you get to listen to um, these lovely people who came on today. You can see, I'm going to make a correction right now. You see I Love Tools starting soon. Okay, Cindy Holt, I'm showing her work today. Um, Wendy Moore is going to show us something that you're going to just love and be inspired. Pam is not doing the second part of the Jelly Plate demo, but she is another great tool. That is my clerical error there. Pam East is showing another great tool. Um, Mags is going to inspire you with uh, what you can use a Silhouette software for. Do not freak out or think I can't follow this. It's going too fast because we have classes where you learn it all. We just want you to be inspired for possibilities. And she's going to show you some fun tools. And Cindy Pope is going to show you also how to use Silhouette software in a way that's really fun and different. So um, I, I think you'll enjoy all the little, we've got a nice mix of everything going on. And I want to send a big kiss to all these women who came on today to do this with me. They're the best. They're the best to play with. So I just want you all to know that I am so grateful. I adore this whole process here. Um, We'll start the video presentation momentarily, at which point we're turning off all our cameras because we just want you to see the presentation. You don't need to look at our our faces here, even though we all put on makeup and look pretty for you. Um, We're going to turn that off. Uh, The handout is in uh, your craftcast.com my library. Wait, let me go to the next slide here. I just want to show you something. Um, write this down though, because wait till I show you this. Um, there's a that's the coupon code for right now for 20% off. I love tool 17. Easy. Write that down. You'll you can if you forget, email us. We'll let you know. Uh, and um, Look at this. Wait, I just wanted to show you before we start the lineup of classes that are coming up. I'm just going to do a little bit of chat about this. Um, And hi to everyone coming on. I see everyone. Hello, hello. Uh, Let me just turn off my video camera so you can just concentrate on what we're seeing. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to go over them really fast, but just I'm just really excited. Coming up, Tracy Spurge is going to show how to make that ridiculously gorgeous hinged metal clay cup. I love it. Um, Shauna Bentoncourt is showing how to make those Palmer clay flowers, which are, I mean, come on. And she makes these earrings as the bonus. I'm not good at Palmer clay, but I really want to try making them. Um, Then Julia Ray is going to show how to make all of these forms. This is a form that was new to me. Penannular is how I believe you say it, which is hollow, but it's great to um, use on your scarves or wool things to hold them in place. I love it. It's a great fashion item. Uh, Karina is going to show how to make that sculpted sewn setting in metal clay. Ridiculous. Okay, Miss Mags. I said to her, oh, Mags, do you think you could do an ornament that was sort of like the old-fashioned ornaments we grew up with? And she's like, I don't know. Well, hello, she did it. She is going to show how to do vintage inspirement ornaments from polymer clay. Gorgeous. Pam East will be showing how to make one of her famous uh, peekaboo pendants. So much fun. Hinged, great fun. Surprises inside. Adorable. Uh, Wendy Moore is showing how to use polymer clay and pastel coloring. Beautiful, elegant, gorgeous. And then last class for this season, uh, Pam Fidel will be showing how to make this uh, metal clay I call it the garden necklace. Okay, how gorgeous is all of that? So I hope you all enjoy. Go check all those classes out and don't forget your um, coupon code right now. It's good for a week. So you can buy all of your um, classes and save a little bit of money because we all love that. Um, All right, so let me tell a little bit about our first presenter, Ms. Wendy Moore. Okay, so now this is very exciting. Now what I love about this is You'll see in this presentation, this polymer clay is helping women have a life and and make money. I mean, it's just so great. I just love how crafts can change women's lives, people's lives, in this case, women. So, Wendy, thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us, talking about all these wonderful women in Nepal and what they're up to. 
It's my great pleasure, Alison. Um, look, it's, yeah, it's really lovely to be here. And as you know, when we were chatting, I said I wanted to start with this photo because this building, even though it looks like it might have been affected in the earthquake, it wasn't, but this building happens probably a very big part because of the polymer clay community. So in um, 2013, I think it was, 2014, Ron Lahockey really galvanised everyone to support us and um, this building was the result. So this is where we have our polymer workshop. We've got a, a refuge for the women. We've got a small microfinance cooperative. We've got a, a kids' centre and, yeah, it wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the international polymer clay community. So um, thank you. <laughs> uh. Now, tell everyone where it is exactly. Well, it's that's a good question. It's way out in the east of Nepal okay. and, um, yeah, a long way from Kathmandu um, near the Indian border. Um, this this next photo, Alison, is another really special one for me. This is a lady called Ombika, and she uh, she's wearing some necklaces. I think people will recognize Lindley Hanani's beautiful yes. petal necklaces. Beautiful. And beautiful. Lindley donated the designs of those to us. We originally contacted her and said, we need cupboards. Can we sell 20 necklaces? And she said, yes, and we bought our cupboards. And then we needed a table. <laughs> we contacted her and said, can we sell 20 more necklaces? And she said, just sell as many as you like which was wonderful so we have it's kept us going oh my gosh and exquisitely beautiful on her there yes. as well totally gorgeous and I love that and I like that she's wearing multiples okay so now so this is where these. people get to hear what's happening next well, right? explain yeah this is the next really super exciting thing that's that's happening um and that is that the, the women are doing a collaboration with Kathleen Dustin and um, making these fabulous, fabulous necklaces. And I've got to say, during COVID, I think it's almost saved our sanity having this because things were pretty tough for a while there, still not easy. And um, Kathleen, uh, Kathleen and the ladies and I meet together every week and she does it at midnight every week. So me well, like you are right night. now, you're coming on yeah. every night. <laughs> but how could I not do that when she she does this every go. week and has done for months now? But it's just been the most astonishing thing um, just to see these ladies grow in confidence and and yeah just learn under her tutelage and so yeah these are these are some of the designs that are being made and these gorgeous women we've got Pramila Gita and Anu and Pramila in the teal top she's recovered from COVID um so it's lovely to see her there but well, um, yes so that's the next thing that's happening. I think we've got more pictures later yes, on. Yes, and let me all. brag about this a second. Those, what's coming up? Well, you go ahead. We'll, we'll yeah. tell everyone, tell well, everyone what this is. Okay, and look, yeah, do ask questions, Alison, if I burble on. Okay. So this, this is another shot that I just adore because um, anyone who's been to Nepal knows that it's just the most vibrant, colourful country and, and, you know, the women used to turn up just the everyday clothing was so bright and vibrant. But after they'd all been working together for a while, they decided they wanted a uniform, which I thought was a bit sad because I loved all the bright stuff. But they chose their uniform and, and I think it just was a real statement of, um, you know, we are all in this together and we, we're a team and we're family. And I this photo just says everything to me. These are women who've just been through really really super tough times but are now changing their little part of the world oh, and the I, lady on the far right copula yeah. she's the absolute heartbeat of the organization oh. so some some people might have met copula in um malta many years ago um at an ipca conference but yeah so she just keeps everything going and um yeah I that love is, that photograph right there, I love that that's their uniform. I should have a uniform that nice. Mine are sweats, my uniform, so yeah. <laughs> they look great there. Um, and here they are at work with something. Yeah, so this is sanding. Um, so it's all, all very communal. There's often singing 
at the same time. The other thing that happens when we're doing this is there's a lot of advocacy stuff going on. So the newer women might come in and, you know, be feeling pretty overwhelmed by life. But some of these older women or, you know, who've been through the program for a lot longer, they'll be the ones saying, you know, you don't have to put up with that. This is this is what you can do, you know. And so it's adv- advocacy coming from the people who've, who've been through it. And then one of the things I love about Samanat now is that more than half of the board is made of the women who've been through the program. So they're running it for themselves, mm-hmm. which I think is just so special. Very inspiring, of course. All right, let's see. Oh, now who is this? Oh, this is our beautiful Sharmila, who has also just recovered from COVID. Um, and, yeah, Sharmila, I, I think we just, we love these quotes that that mm-hmm. she made. Her, her big thing is that just understanding that everyone is in this together, that, mm-hmm. that something that she makes with her own hands is something that she sells to to be independent and support her family. And um, and she is an incredibly courageous and independent girl. So what she says in that quote is so true. But, um, yeah, she's, it's beautiful. she's one of the most experienced. So she's been doing the polymer now for about uh, 12 years, I think. It's very inspiring. I love it. Um, all right, so here they are working, you said, with colour cards. Yeah, this is, um, some people might be familiar with Tracy Holmes's Breakthrough Colour. And so this was, um, we were doing some colour mixing exercises. We we use Kato clay just because it's so hot and steamy and a lot of the other clays get really sticky and we mix all our own colours. So we've got these, I have one here and they have one over there, this massive sort of colour recipe book and you know, if there's an earthquake, that's what they grab. <laughs> um, but that was, yeah, that was just going through exercises so that they're becoming more confident about mixing all their own colours and how to sort of record the recipes and all that sort of thing. You um, said something interesting to me. Didn't you say something like they don't have as many names for colours? No, they? that's right. So when okay. when I was living there, it would be, you know, I'd say, well, what would we call this? And they'd say, oh, green. And then I'd hold up, you know, teal or something. And they'd say, what would we call this? And they'd say, green. And we thought, okay, this isn't going <laughs> to work. And so, yeah, there just wasn't a, a sort of a sense of naming colours. So we've we've come up with all our own names for the colours. I love that. that that's, that's an interesting thing as well, yeah. uh, the thought of having colours. All right, so now here's the really cool thing, everyone. Yes. They are, you're, they are working in conjunction, like you said, uh, with Kathleen Dustin, who does award-winning, beautiful polymer clay work, yeah. beautiful necklaces. They're working in conjunction. The money that, the money made, um, a small amount is taken out all goes to the women in Nepal to help support uh their endeavors there and their life and what a great what is it a good mashup combo I'm using some hip words there um to put together to support both getting Palmer clay out there and you know I know so many people will want to purchase these necklaces I believe they go on sale in October correct mid, yes okay. yes mid, mid October and um and I think I think that there's because so many people say, you know, how do we how do we help the women? And the biggest thing I think is buying the jewelry. So these next photos are, are photos of the jewelry. And this I particularly love this necklace, this photo, because it is such a collaboration. So it's the beads that the girls have made for years and years and years. And then Kathleen has combined them. And there's a little story, I'll try and be quick about these. We were looking for long needles to cook these on. So in in you know Australia and the US and UK, you can get all the knitting needles in different sizes to cook them. Couldn't do that in Nepal. And so we were really struggling to be able to cook those fabulous long beads. And then the girls realised that they, um, there was a broken umbrella and they, they thought that the spokes of that broken umbrella would probably be the perfect size for these beads. And they were. So now we call these umbrella necklaces Aww. because those beads are cooked on recycled umbrellas. <laughs> See, I love tools. No matter how you There you go. Them. That's the tool. Broken there umbrellas. I mean, that just makes me smile. 
Uh, now, here's the thing, and it's in the handout. We have a few more pieces here. I'm just going to stop and show them off a little bit. If you want to find out when these go on sale, um, in the handout for today's um, presentation is a place to subscribe um, to the newsletter so you'll get information. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you can't really buy them yet, but I know you'll want to know as soon as they're available. Cause no, and if, if, if people subscribe, they will hear very, very early. We're looking at mid October. That's the plan, and um, yeah, it's a, look, it's a great. I think it's widely biased, but I think it's a great website, and you get lots of stories about what how the women are going and lots of connection with them. So salmonat.co this is these are our spice market necklaces so these are truly really spices straight from the market and um they don't smell unfortunately oh, <laughs> um i but, love how that looks yeah yeah and that's that's a really really stunning necklace and it can be worn in a couple of different ways so um yes it's just so, perfect that it's also spices from the market. I mean, yeah, just, yeah. And we've got a couple of, I don't know how secret they are, but we've got some more necklaces coming up with some very interesting mystery ingredients. All right. Um, everyone, but sign yeah, so up. there's lots of that thing. Sign happening. up for that uh, newsletter so you can get all the information. Please the women do. In Nepal. We love that Palmer Clay helps. And um, Wendy, thank you so much for staying up and giving us. Oh, it's a great pleasure. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's always lovely fabulous. chatting with you. Yeah. And now Wendy has a class coming up. So check out her class on craftcast.com, a beautiful class with Palmer Clay and pastels. You'll love They're exquisite. So check that out as well. Thank you, darling. Oh, thank you so much, Alison. Bye-bye, everyone. Lovely to be here. Mwah. All right. What is coming up next? Let's just see here. Ah, yes. Okay. So here's the thing. I want to show you, this is a tool. Who's put in the question box, who knows what a jelly plate is? Are you up on that? Uh, because they caught on, they're very popular it seems, but then you get it and you wonder, what should I do with this? Because when you open that adorable box, which I'm gonna show you in a second, um, you wonder, hmm, what do I do with this thing that looks like some hardened, um, you have when you need ideas? Yeah, okay, you're gonna love this, or I, I certainly did. All right, so here's the thing. Uh, Cindy Holt, she's not on today, but I'm going to show um, part of her class. It's already done. You can get it at Craftcast. Uh, Barbara, you haven't used one yet. You're going to love this. Um, and uh, so let me just show this. All right. And I'm not the Polliver Clay person here at all. Cindy is. Look at her jewelry. You're going to flip out when you see how she does this. This is just a little tidbit from her class that we have for sale of how she did it. I love all those pieces. I love black and white. I love the middle. I liked this that looked like a silk screen. I mean, I thought the artwork was stunning. Uh, and I thought, you know, me, I'm thinking I wouldn't know how to even begin to do that. Uh, it's, you know, beautiful. It's layered. I love the little iridescent showing through the little bit of gold. I thought, oh my gosh, beautiful. Okay, so in this class, like I said, she shows tons of ways to do different prints and silk screens, but in this class, there it is. Okay, I'm just gonna pause it here for one second. The jelly plate. They come in all those different sizes. Um, it, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of advice. You can get them big, you can get them little, you can get the big one, cut it up. But here is what I found. It's like, how cute is the packaging? But then you open it and you wonder, now what? But. Cindy Holt's going to show us exactly how. So what she did was that's a little piece of jelly plate right there. Um, and you take off the little plastic protecting on it. You can see hers has been well loved, well used. Um, she uses inexpensive paint brushes. We're not doing anything high tech here. And there's her polymer clay. Um, I'm going to guess Mags, you're on. You can tell us rolled it probably like what a medium setting there. It's not real thick. Um, and uh, all she does is she takes some paint and starts swirling it around. Dun, 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 so, so far, I'm like, I can do that. I know I can do that. Uh, and so, and here's the thing, low tech, she's using just a plain acrylic paint, nothing fancy here. And, you know, she was telling us how you do this. If you, if you get the class, you'll see. She's just having fun swirling it all around. And then she takes her clay. She's using white clay. She says in the class what clay she's using and how thick and all of that. 
Uh, nothing high tech here. Push it down, peel it up, and look at that. Now that flipped me out that that was so pretty. Okay, here's one she already did. Now she's gonna do the other side so you can do both sides. What do you guys think? Have you done it this way? Um, and I'm just like, I am blown away seeing how that is, right? So pretty. Now, obviously afterwards she shows how she uses the cookie cutters and all the different stuff um, so that you can uh, make red or shapes, but I mean, that just blew me away and that's just black paint. And what blew me away is how just random and easy that was, which is what I love. Um, and wait, she's gonna show another really cool thing right after this. So anyway, I love the black and white. You let it dry before you do anything else. It dries pretty fast. It's just a light acrylic paint. Uh, you know, you can keep going if you want. Um, she actually uses bits and pieces um, and just keeps putting it everywhere. So then she shows in this class, in this just this little bit, it's like I said, it's a long class, but this is just a little bit. Um, okay, she's gonna make, add some metallic. So she takes the gold paint and again, same thing, not even that much, and just swirls some around. We can all do this so far. I know that. It's all good. Um, and then she's going to take the piece she just did. Now watch this and you'll see it when she picks it up, how cool it looks. Da -da. Now, see when she just moves it in the light, you start picking up the gold and that's what gives it the metallic um, that she does in there as well. Uh, and now she has this beautiful piece. That's real time. We just watched um, doing this. And I, I don't know, this just blows me away. It's a great way to use the jelly plate. I'm sure you'll all find other ways to do it. That's her class right there, printing on polymer clay. She shows lots of really cool things and shows how she does everything in there. I highly recommend it if you want to just play around. Um, and she makes it look so easy. And I love that. What do you think, guys? Mags, did I talk about polymer clay correctly? What do you think? All right, I'm asking to unmute you guys. You muted yourselves. Okay, do you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay, I wasn't ignoring you. I just couldn't unmute earlier. Yeah, you know, you did a great job. You would think that maybe you had actually worked with polymer clay at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me unmute all you guys because you muted yourself and I think you gave yourselves like permanent. Yeah, um, I think we did, yeah. Yeah, uh, there you go. Now you muted yourself. Vera, I'm back. Um, right? It's just like to use that. Let me just see if there are any other questions too. Um, do, 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 do. And there are a bunch of people out there working with polymer clay that are using the jelly plate for similar and different purposes altogether. So it, it's really a cool, I haven't played with it myself, but I, it's a very cool te technique that you can use with a lot of different applications. Right. And I think people should just, I know people are going to start experimenting. Um, Pam, I see you. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to unmute as well. You know, Zoom with panelists, you just don't know how it's going to go. You guys in the Q&A, we can't unmute everyone. Hundreds of people signed up for this and it would just be a crazy bar fest, I think, if we did that. So uh, we're just trying to keep our panelists unmuted. Uh, but I think it's great. I think it's great fun. They're not that expensive. You can use it forever and, um, and, and sign up for her class. That video is really fun. I really loved it a lot. Um, I learned a lot. So, and it's because she makes it look so easy. So now, Mags, I'm glad you're unmuted because because you're next, but let me explain to everyone something before we start here. Uh, Miss Mags is going to show us some really fun things. Um, and I just want everyone to know, don't try and follow along on this one. This is just to inspire you. Uh, Mags has lots of classes on CraftCast where she goes into great detail. And the best way to learn, if you wanna learn uh, new, the new software with Silhouette, uh, if you want to learn new techniques, I should say, get the classes. And then what you do is you pause it. You do what she says, 
you go, oh, I get it. Then you move your video forward. You pause it. That's the best way. I think, what do you think, Mags? To I agree. Okay, I wholeheartedly good. agree because we okay. tried, as usual, I tried to squeeze about two and a half hours worth of information <laughs> into 10 minutes. So stuff is going to fly by you. Stuff's going to fly by, but it's yep. just there for inspiration. Yep. And then you do show a little bit of the, the tools with flex shapes. All right, let me start right. here. <laughs> so let's start it. Yes, you're going to just, you know, talk fast is all I can say. So usually I'm here telling you how to use these machines with polymer clay. And we got lots of classes on that, but we're going to talk about just using the software, whether you have a machine or not. Right. And you can get the very basic um, software for free just by going to the Silhouette America site and downloading it. I suggest you play with that a little bit. The things I'm going to show you today are, pro I would suggest you get the Designer Plus um, version of that, but but start with the basics. And um, each time you upgrade, you get a few more tools are released. And I, I'll tell you, for the value of this, uh, the, the prices of the upgrades are very, very reasonable because once you get them, you've got them. Every update, every version change, you continue to get it. So once you've played with the basics, Wing Design always has the best prices on the studio software upgrades. So normally the designer is $50 on sale for 30, Designer Plus is 75 on sale for 30, 43, and Business is normally 100 on sale for 60. Business edition you really only need if you are using other types of machines that you need to export your designs as SVGs or other types of files. If you have a Glowforge like um, Allison and I do, you want to do your designing in Silhouette Studio and then save it as an SVG to upload it into your, um, into your Glowforge internet. But there's other machines that you could save your files and use a Cricut. You could save your files and use it in embroidery machines. But most of what I'm going to show, you can get away with the um, Designer Edition Plus. Yeah. And that link is in your handout as well that yes. you can do. Yeah. Um, who's writing on there? Oh, yeah. Pam East just wrote in. Everyone's using it for... Um, designing well you'll see it's designing and that's what we're gonna do end. you know yeah. what it's really hard to learn it's it not hard is the wrong word you have to commit to learning some new software but when you right. do and you make it your own that's it yeah and that's and, all it takes and just play with it just sit in front of the tv and just play learn what the different buttons do and everything right now right. this class was this was in our uh, quilt block class but basically what i'm going to show you here is how you can take shapes and you can design your cane you can test drive the colors you want to use and how you want to place them. And then you can also then at the end figure out how many with these I'm extruding um, through a clay gun out of a square die. But you could use this. You could use other die shapes um, to make extruded canes and just just saves you a lot of time and agony of it just gives you that place to start from where you yeah. can say, I love these colors. How will they look the best? Yeah. And instead of just putting it down and going, I hate this. So, all right. Right. This will move fast when we start This one goes here. really fast. Right. So don't freak out. This is yeah. really just to get inspired because what Mags just said is really true. It's a great way to just visualize things that normally you would be, you'd have to put, you know, everything down and take a look at it. Yeah. So. So here the big tool, we're, first we're going to use the replicate, which replicate is fabulous. So we're just going to make a nine by nine square um, quilt block here. And then what you're going to see me use for the rest of this is the eyedropper tool. So with the eyedropper tool, I've loaded up into this space um, three images from Design Seeds, which is a great source to go to for color um, Color, color harmonies and yeah. palettes and stuff. So I'm going to pick my three shades of three different colors, and I'm going to put them into those my palette on the right. So I'm just taking that eyedropper, and I'm just going in there and clicking the color that I want it to be. And you can use the eyedropper, or you could actually, you're going to see in a second, you can go into the color design panel, and you can actually pick your own colors. Um, based on color numbers or just looking there on the range and pick, picking where you want to go. And now what I can do is I can just go in there and I'll take my eyedropper and I'm going to change each one of the squares to the color that I think I want it to be. 
and you're going to see us just fly through this one. Yeah, but this is the fun. This is the TV yeah. watching fun to play. And to yeah. learn this, it's not that hard, but just take one of Mag's class. And here's the it. thing. There's an undo button. You can't really make a mistake. You just undo. And yeah. the, the one the one great thing about going through the business edition is you get multiple undos. So you could go and undo all the way back to who knows where. So here what I'm doing is I've taken a copy of the final block and I'm changing the order of the colors just to see, okay, will I like that better? And now look at all those examples I have to choose from. And then there at the end is telling me how many extrusions I need of each color. Now on this one, we're gonna take a log cabin block and we're gonna use the replicate, the mirror up and down and side and flip and all these kind of things to see what, what grouping of log cabin block do we want to make. And you, I mean, you would have to, you'd have to cut and paste and yeah, really, just I guess. I mean, I just love this for designing stuff like this. Yeah. Because it doesn't happen quite this fast, but it's pretty dang fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With all the replicate buttons and all yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Now, this is the really fun thing. And this you do need to have designer plus for. So these are what they call the flexi shapes. So you get a bunch of basic shapes that you can open up and you can use these red dots and you can customize this shape to be anything that you want it to be. You see on this flower, I can choose how many petals, I can mm -hmm. choose how far the petals go in. Here, it doesn't even really look like a flower anymore. And there I've got that shape. Now we're gonna take another shape <clears throat> and we're gonna go in and we're gonna use um, the center rotation um, knob that's really fun. So this lightning bolt, I can decide how many edges I want on it, how wide I want it to be. You can see that there's a lot of different things, shapes that you can get out of this one shape. And now you'll see that little crosshair in the middle. I'm going to bring that out to the edge. And then I'm going to open up my replicate uh, panel and I'm going to choose to replicate, I guess, four is probably what I did on this one. Now, these are still separate pieces. So that, that, that didn't work for me. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to go and I'm going to move back. See there, it doesn't weld because the, they weren't close enough to each other. The mm -hmm, shapes have mm -hmm. to touch, overlap even the slightest bit. So you'll see a little hiccup here. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to move that center of rotation back in a little bit. So that they'll all touch when you're up. So now they're all going to touch. Got I did it. three. Okay. That doesn't work. So I'm going to go back and do four. There we go. Now you see they all cross over each other. So mm -hmm. now I can group the whole thing, weld them together, and there's and a, new a new shape. shape. Yeah, that's genius. And then you don't have to draw from scratch. Exactly. Now you can cut these. You could print these onto a sheet of cardstock, cut them out, make your own stem, you know, stencils or templates. You don't need a machine to use this. Um, obviously, it helps because you can cut different um, types of materials a lot easier and you can cut stuff with more detail easier on the machines, but you really don't have to have the machine to do this. And there again, right. I took triangles and I'm going to weld those together into one piece. So the replicates, the, the different panels you get on those are incredible. They really, really help a lot. And what you're going to see here on the bottom, all of those purple designs were made using just the basic shapes that you get with the program and the modified tools. Um, so you don't need the fancy thing to do some basic shapes. Now we're going to talk about some grids, which Pam's going to show you some of these that she has as um, acrylics. And I would say go buy them because they look great. But if you want to make yours for a special project, I use these to help me with the spacing of my holes when I'm trying to line up um, two different pieces for earrings and things. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I, you can decide how many replications you want, how far away you want those lines to be. And now I'm going in and I'm alternating colors just because my 63-year-old eyes don't see so great anymore. So this is going to give me a way that I can center a piece in there and help me place my holes where I want them. And again, you, print them out on cardstock or you laminate made your own them. tools. We're making made my our own, own tools. tools. Yep. So here I'm doing a center thing, just like um, Pam's going to show you, which I think her stuff is brilliant. Um, but here you're just using the offset. So you set the offset to, to whatever, however, you know, far away you want those circles to be from each other. And you just keep on doing it. 
You're going to have them perfectly placed, group them together. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the colors again for my eyes. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some crosshairs using the replicate um, tool. And now I, if I want to put the holes on the sides, if I want to put them in the middle, I, all kinds of stuff you can do with these. And I'm sure you're going to find shapes that work for whatever you're working with as well. This doesn't have to be polymer clay. This could be anything. Oh, yeah. That could be baking. That could be icing. A cake. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I just I love the tools. I really do. They're just fabulous. OK, so now this is really cool because this is Cindy could have used these with her gel plates. So what you're going to see me do here is I'm going to that's a picture of one of my veneers. So I import that in as an image. I make sure that it's the right size. I'm taking my earring shapes that I want to use for this set of earrings. And I'm going to place these shapes onto the veneer where I think I might want them to go. And you'll see me play around with them. Sometimes I'm trying to go to the purpley blue side and some to the green blue side. And I'm going to just play around with all those shapes. And once I get them placed where I want them to be, I'm going to make a copy of it and put it off to the side. And then I'm going to use the crop tool. And the crop tool is going to crop out all of the stuff that's not in the shapes. So I'm going to end up having a picture of those shapes where they're cut out of and where I place them on that veneer that I can then play around with even further um, to decide how I want to finally cut out those veneers so that you're not wasting a bunch of veneers or trying to see how they're going to look by looking through the holes in your cutters and everything. So here you see I cut out several different versions. There were a couple of different um, veneers that I had to play with. And this is in the earring class. Um, it goes into full detail of how to do this. And now you're going to see me just kind of playing around with, oh, do I want to move this here or there? and go back and forth. I love playing around like that. Plus you get new ideas. Exactly. What I ended up doing was not what I thought I was going to do. Right. And it was basically because I just played around. And anyone who has questions, I see Pam, you're trying to help people. I bet Cindy type in there. We have all the experts here. I'll just tell you that Mag's class, Pam's class, Cindy's class. We have a lot of silhouette and how to mix it in with different things yeah. and just start taking some of their classes. It's just jump in is the best way. Yeah. So there's the final pair of earrings. And I never would have cut them that way. Now, here we don't have a class on this. I just wanted to throw this in. So the design studio, uh, I mean, the design store on silhouette has tons of, um, of files that are made for you know, jewelry box, display stuff. Again, you don't have to have a machine to cut this. You could print this out on your cardstock or whatever you want to use or make templates for it. And then you can, a lot of this you could cut by hand without too much of a problem. And you can adjust the sizes. You can change, once you know the software a little bit, you can go into a file that you've purchased and change it around to suit what you want it to do. It's crazy. And this is what we'll have a class coming up probably in the uh, first of the year on also making different things and cutting out displays as well, whether yep. it's Glowforge or any of that kind of thing. Yep. These have been great to use with a lot of my Glowforge stuff. Yeah. Because I can cut cardstock on the Glowforge now and it's just kind of changed my life. There you go. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot, everyone. All right. Let me look over here and see a few questions. Where do I find the handouts for this? It's in your craftcast my library i wish i could throw it into the chat box here but yeah. it doesn't seem to take it i don't know what do you guys maybe mags when you're done you can see if you can put it in the chat box i think it was a security thing that you can't put a PDF. i think it was yeah, yeah. That you couldn't do the pdf on, but you'll have it on your link and you can like she said earlier you can always just go ask a question over on craftcast yes. and it will be it will be sent to the right person if allison can't answer the question she will send it to one of us and we will um and she will get that done for you i lie i just make something up or she makes together. something up yeah that's how yeah. it got but the majority so. of what you saw on this was the the quilt class was the one that had the really in-depth of using the replicate and using the colors and everything. The, the earring class that we did not too long ago, that's got bonuses for all of the rest of what you saw in it. I can't that remember, go did, into you put, 
Did you put pictures in here of some of your classes? I think there's pictures, yes, okay, that so are coming, coming up, up maybe, or um, maybe this was the one. There that, we go. There, there we, go. we go. So there's yep. the quilting canes, which goes in designing. The cutouts gives you, I think we have five bonuses in that one. I know that's huge. Yeah. yeah. Just start yeah. with that one right and away. And then this guy, which is, uh, this is exciting. I'm happy she sent me a challenge because what I was going to do looks boring compared to this. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I mean, come on, they're beautiful. So it's and they won't exciting. break when you drop them. There you go. This is correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mags. It's You're always welcome. our minds are going a million miles a minute. Um, let's see here. Let me see if there's any <coughs> other questions. You guys are great handling the questions in the chat box there too. So, uh, and if there's something that we don't see, just send us a email at support um, <coughs> at craftgas.com. Um, all right. Miss Pam East is coming up next. She made a big move. She has a beautiful new studio. We love everything she does. It's always exciting for her to come on and you're going to love this tool, which seems to be making a big comeback again. Which oh is, man. Right. This okay, is, wait. This is like one of my absolute favorite tools. Yeah, I, I love when Pam tells me, oh, I know what I want to do. I want to do that. I want to do, look at that. Pam this, earrings on right now using this tool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. This is this is um, the this crafted findings riveting tool is it like changed things for me. I I had been trying to do diff more traditional riveting and I hated it and and then I found this and it was like why isn't everybody using this? I know. And, so you're gonna show us how to do and, this and then you're gonna have a class where you show us how to make those earrings. I've already decided. So please. okay, you okay, you got it. I'm gonna <laughs> do right, a class on these earrings because there's a, and they they spin. <laughs> I know. I, I love mean, it's like jewelry and a toy. Yeah. Um, so they make two versions of this for tool. It's it, it's crafted findings, or you, you can also go to metalclayfindings.com. It's the same company. Um, and uh, they make a standard reach and a long reach. And I th I really wanted to point this out because when you go to buy your own, get the long reach. I, you know, there the long reach will do everything the short reach does, but the short reach won't do everything the long reach does. And if you want to do my peekaboo box. You have to have the long reach. Okay. It cannot be done with the standard reach tool. So, and I think that's the link that's in the handout, right? Yeah, there's a link, the and one. also yeah. there's a there's a coupon. There's a coupon the, code. The, yeah. yeah, the uh, there's a ten percent off coupon code from Metal Clay Findings, and on your whole order. So, I think that's in the handout too. Yes, it is. And, Everything's in the handout, and I think Katie just said something, and I think she might be right. Are those backwards? Because it looks like the long reach would be on above, and the nope. One, Nope, it's that they way? are okay. not. It's the, the 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 long reach does not have to do with the distance from left to right. Okay. It has to do with the distance from top to bottom. Okay, there look, you go. Look at the opening, you know, of, between it. the top and the bottom. It's a much it. wider throat. Got uh, it. So you can put a much thicker piece in the long reach. It, the reach is top to bottom, not side to side. That they have the same amount. You can see one's kind of scooped and one has a flat edge, and um, but they are exactly the same length. I knew you would have right. right, but I thought the same um, thing. But now that makes sense. It's yeah, it's no, it, it has wider. to do with how thick how a high. piece you can yep. rivet, and to rivet a bale onto a peekaboo box, you got to be able to put in something pretty darn box. thick. Got it. And so that's uh, that's why you need the long reach version of the tool. And everyone is saying, um, yeah, Katie's like, ah, oh, gotcha, right? Uh, <laughs> that handout, again, log into your craftcast.com, my library, like where you registered, it's there. Just go down to the downloads. Um, I believe because of um, security measures, when you do a webinar through Zoom, you can't throw a PDF in the chat box. So, or, or I would do that. Uh, and if for some reason you can't, you, you'll find it. Just go to craftcast.com, my library. And if we'll you make sure you get it. We'll make we will sure make you sure. get it. It's, yeah. it's all there, all the links. So no worries. All right, onward And, and you here. definitely want that coupon. Anyway, so this is, the, the cool thing about the tool is that it is, uh, you do both the cutting of the holes on one side and the setting of the rivet on the other. The other tool, and I think Mags, this is what Mags was talking about, is I put together this little marking tool. I've got a million tools with lines on them but none of them had holes in them. And right. so, you know, I was trying to find a way to mark the center of a circle or mark the center of a square or mark this mark an angle. And so I designed this little, it's very, it's not, it, it, it's small, but those, those squares are um, half inch. 
that's a, those are half inch markings on the squares. And you can lay that over your work and then you can put a pin to mark clay, you know, like a needle tool to mark clay, or you could put a Sharpie to mark metal or paper or whatever else you wanna mark the centers on. And it's just a little visual aid to help you find uh, centers or spacing or angles. No, and this it. is this is available from artclayworld.com. Again, and, that link and is in the handout. I want to tell you guys that all my new templates, I, I've completely switched over to, um, to they're being manufactured by Katie Baum Designs. They're distributed through Art Clay World. And instead of being clear, they're all pink now with, and they're transparent, but they're pink. So when you lay them on your table, they don't vanish anymore. So I, I'm, I am, I am so happy with my new pink templates. <laughs> oh, my, I love all you women. That's my signature color. The I love I'm, it. The, I'm the only one that gets pink templates. So I love it. All you women. Anyway. Tools. All right. So, that's another fabulous tool. Check that out in your handout. I think it's um, great even for doing embroidery or sewing. All right. What's this baby? Right, so this is a, this is a Proxon vice that you can clamp to the edge of the table and you don't absolutely have to have a vice to, to use the riveting tool but you kind of need three hands you know because you got to be positioning with one hand and twisting with another hand and something else has to be holding the tool you can find other ways to hold the tool but this is only about 50 bucks it's on I, you can get it on amazon and um, it's a very useful tool it's got a ball joint so you can tilt that vice around in a lot of different directions. And I have to it, say that is one of the sexiest shots of some tools I've seen <laughs> in a long time. I'm, I'm just saying that's who I am. I'm just being honest. Who does, and, I don't know what that does and I don't care. I would like one. It's not very expensive and it's super, super useful. I use mine all the time. And um, it's, uh, but with the riveting tool, especially being able to tilt things so you can see it yeah, uh, the brand is nice the, the brand is proxon sam p-r-o-x-x-o-n and, and it's we didn't put handout. that in the link we just thought you guys should just yeah look around it's, wherever it's, you get oh it. actually i don't think that is in the handout but it's it is a uh it's a fabulous little vice look on amazon it's not yeah. very expensive and no, it's, it's not on it's not really wonderful out. No, it's really wonderful. All right, we'll but anyway, see now anything up. you can to hold that tool so that you can use the other two hands. And here I am setting it up. You'll be able to see the word Proxon on it. And it comes in these two pieces. It can just sit on its own. You could, you could screw it down to a table if you wanted, or you can use the clamp. Um, the clamp just slides into a slot. And then you, and it's got a really wide throat, so it can, it can work on all kinds of tables, you know, very, very thick, That's very, very really thin. That's really important. Uh, but for this, for using the um, riveting tool, you actually don't need to clamp it to anything because we're not putting on any pressure. It's just a, a third hand. So I just set it on the table. I don't even, you know, I don't even clamp it to anything. And I'm going to push it down so that... Um, you know, you can see the ball joint, it goes in all different directions. Mm -hmm. And I want to, I had to position this in an angle so that the camera would show you what I was actually doing. And so I've got it set sideways instead of straight up. And actually, this is what I've discovered the best way to use it, because you can really see, see both sides of the piece at the same time. And here's the tool and I've got it set to the cutting side. So the, this, the other side is where the rivets are set. And right now I'm gonna stick it in there with the cutting side sticking out. So the tool itself isn't in my way. And you can see how I'm gonna be cutting with it. And then I'm gonna be um, using my marking tool to start marking some centers so I know where I wanna put my holes. And so, I'm going to position the um, the circles over my circle. Now I want to. I'm going to give myself a break here. When I'm working with this tool, I look straight down on it, and you would be seeing the back of my head instead of the tool. I had to push this out ahead of me to be able to see it with the camera, and I actually got my my marks off a little bit because of that. It looks um, really but, good though. <laughs> it's, it's pretty darn close, yes. but it would have been even better had All I been right. we'll right give you down that. on it. Um, uh, so anyway, so there I am just putting the pen right through and marking where those centers are. And you can mm -hmm. mark it from the front, you can mark it from the back. 
you know, whichever way you want to market. And I pulled out a few. Oh, they're already marked because I filmed this more than once. But you get the idea. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is uh, this is how I'm using that that marketing tool. And of, of course, being me, I did more than I should have. Sure. <laughs> Of course you did. Uh, um, but I'm going to say right now, people want to know about the Proxon. That's the one link that's not in the handout. Just Google it. Yeah, can, so. yeah Google. It, it's P-R-O-X-X-O-N. There's two X's. There and um, support so, your local hardware store if you can. That's all. Yeah. Good. they're And they're, as I said, they're not very expensive. OK, so here I am. I'm going to be cutting a hole in the middle of this piece. And I just position the uh, the cutter on the mark. And so when you get it where it's touching, you can stop and you can look at it from different angles. And really, that was it. Two twists and I was through. And I mean, this is so easy. There's my Mm -hmm. hole. And the holes it's cutting, it's their 1 16th uh, diameter. And the rivets are 1 16th diameter. So you're cutting holes that are absolute perfect size for the rivets. And crafted uh, metal clay finding sells both the rivets and um, the riveting tool, and they're designed to go together. So you, you don't have to be guessing at what drill bit size. It's all just going to work. And you, you just work it off. Now, this earring, you know, I put the center hole on where I'm going to put them together. I also need a link or excuse me, a uh, hole at the edge because it's an earring and I need to be able to hang it. <laughs> and so don't forget to put in a hole to for your jump ring um, at the edge and there, so there's that um, and so now I've got the two holes so and more secure than trying to get your drill and just go okay hold my breath drill a hole yeah there's no skittering around of mm-hmm. a drill bit you don't have to do a center punch what you do is you you turn it until the um, the cutter is touching and then you can look around to see if it's touching the mark in the right place and if not you can adjust it now when I turn the tool over all the little metal bits I cut out fell out of the tool save those those are silver they're recyclable yeah. yep. <laughs> so you know they, they're going to come out the bottom and so make sure when you turn the tool over that you save your little silver scraps so here's the rivet and I'm showing that the head is going to go into that cup Okay. So there's a little cup and the the little head. I'm I'm repositioning the tool so that now it's instead of on the cutting side, it's on the rivet setting side. And I'm going to thread the pieces together. Um, I had to, I'm sorry that there are things that are off screen there. I had to get things down where I could see them. Um, I will be moving back up into screen shot here very shortly. You know, I was just thinking I did this once, but I didn't use a, uh, um, holder for it, and it's much easier to use. Oh, it's a thousand device. percent easier. Yeah. A thousand percent. Okay, so the first thing I want you to notice is how much rivet is sticking out, and that mm-hmm. is way too much. Okay, that is way too much. You can buy these rivets in all different lengths. I used one eighth inch for these earrings, uh, but it all depends upon the thickness of your clay, how many things you're putting together. So you're gonna, I get get a variety of rivet sizes, and these are, and get the sterling. Rivets. They sell fine silver, but the, I like the sterling uh, rivets. They're stronger. So okay. the the length of that sticking out, it's about a credit card thickness. So you need about a credit card's width sticking out on the other side. Real quick, and, if you're embedding, you want to use the fine silver. If you're embedding it before you. Oh fire right, it. right, right, right. That's true. That's true. Okay. Um, so yeah, if, if you're going to be putting it in the kiln, use fine silver. Um, so I have got. The head is in the cup. The little pin inside that tool is in the uh, is setting it down, and there it is. It's set. It's done. Applause. <laughs> Applause. And I want to show the next one. I'm going to show. I'm going to do a close up on, and you'll be able to see uh, some of the positioning a little more clearly because there's there's a detail I need to explain. Um, oh my God! Yes, Monica, it is way easier than a hammer. Yeah, Monica, just um, so much easier than my hammer. I know, right? Uh, I mean, come on. And so here I am, uh, putting together this kind of lacy one. And again, I'm using the one eighth because that's the thickness that I was using. Just a credit card thickness sticking out. And um, what I really want you to see, it not only is the head of the rivet in that little cup, 
but there's a pin. Can you see the pin coming yep. out from the thread side? Yep. The, the rivet is hollow. It's a tube. There we go. We're zooming in now. So there's the, the, the head yeah. going yeah. into the cup. And if you look the other side, there's that pin. And my thumb is going to move out of the way in a minute so that you can see. So that pin has to go into that tube. If it's not inside that tube, it's not going to work. Got it. So then you give it a couple of twists. That sets the rivet. That was it. Just a couple of twists. And then oh, Steve's going, move it up, move it up. My husband helps me film. And uh, there it is. And it spins. Ooh, so <laughs> And Ooh, it's uh. so quick and it's so easy. And it, I just absolutely adore this. I, you know, I've been making earrings like this for years and I just wish everybody knew about this tool because it opens up some possibilities that, you know, you might not otherwise working have. With small dainty things like that. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay. And there's your and, upcoming class. And I want to say that I'm working on Yeah. I had some absolutely gorgeous examples that all got sold. And this is not going to be the actual final project. It's not going to be another steampunk box. I've got another one for you to see. But look at how the bale is attached to the box. That's what you should be looking at. Uh, because I used a tube rivet instead. I did a, an eyelet instead of a rivet, a headed rivet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used that eyelet to set the um, bale to all to put all the pieces together and allow for the thing to swing because that's the whole point of this box is that you're wearing it and as you move the box swings and people get just a little peek at what's inside it's like you've got a secret and yeah, I just find that so absolutely cool. delicious <laughs> I so love cool. that. All right. People are and, writing in caps in the chat box because they're excited <laughs> about rivets, right? And she made yeah, it easy, of course. And um, it is easy. That, that one really is easy. It's a, that riveting tool just was life changing for me. So, anyway. and everyone, again, who's writing about the handout, you have to log into your um, account at craftcast.com. It's in your My Library at craftcast.com. Just go down to the downloads. I uh, believe deal, due to security, I can't plop that PDF in the box. If I can just answer a question real quick, Diane Go ahead, asked, where do you get the rivets? The, the rivets also come from metalclayfindings.com. They sell the tool and the rivets. You can get the rivets in copper, bronze. You can get them in sterling silver and fine silver, and they sell all different lengths. Oh, you can get them um, in copper and bronze too. That's great. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can get them in all different colors. Colors. Okay. So that makes it like yeah, I remember when I learned from Robert Danzig how to do it with the hammers. This is easier, just saying, especially for the fine little work like this. You know, it's not doing large pieces. So um, thank you for showing us a great tool that I know everyone is. How many people listening in the chat box do you have one already? And you're now really and excited. I have one because because of Pam, I, I showed, watched her do it. And I said, oh, my gosh, I can't rivet well with a hammer, but. I and can, cool. right. who uh, right. somebody asked if you could do use it with with polymer clay and the answer is yes um I oh, yeah, good it, question I've I've also done it on leather um so I've I, I actually leather. just taught a class where I I riveted um metal uh clasps to leather uh journals um and I think uh uh Cindy Pope has a whole class on leather bracelets with um I don't think we don't use that tool for that, but for um, one of the classes I do, I think yeah, for the uh, embellishing one. Yeah. But anyway, the, so you can use it on all kinds of materials. I, I love how people are writing in the thought of you putting in the vice was great. Everyone's like, I hadn't thought of that. So that is a really good thing. Uh, I love Venera. You said she, she can't find hers, but as soon as she orders another one, she knows she'll find the first one. <laughs> <laughs> You're with your tribe here, darling, is all I can say. <laughs> Uh, it's, it is, the vice is really worth the cost of admission, even though it was free, it's still worth the cost of admission, putting it in the vice. Cause I never thought of that. So Ms. Pam, thank you for being another genius. We love learning. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We have another Pam cause we, we did two Cindy's, two Pam's in this class. So it's pretty fun. Uh, we have now Pam F not Pam E, uh, and Pam, yes. Pam, have I unmuted you? Are no, you okay? I guess I, I'm oh, unmuted. Good. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, Pam, okay, look at this tool. Pam is going to show us. She's another metal clay 
guru enthusiast. genius with all of that enthusiast. Okay. Uh, uh, but this tool, you're going to want to, I'm just afraid to tell you that this you, cutter. You are going to want this guy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So talking about simple and sometimes it's just, you know, it's the simplest things that are hard to do. So cutting straight lines and cutting the right widths uh, of metal clay is not always easy. I'm just going to do a little demo here. So I'm just rolling out some clay. This is actually Hadar Jacobson's copper clay. I'm rolling it four cards thick. There's no trick to the thickness. It's just a demo. You can use the tool to cut any, any depth of clay that you're interested in. Polymer clay, metal clay. Clay. Yes. Yeah, all of the above. Exactly. Already bought mine. <laughs> and, when, and when we cut, the, of course, it's going to be the width of the inside of the blade. So I'm just trying to, to point that out to you here. And I'm going to show you a couple quick cuts. So here, look, you can lay the blade down anywhere, pull it through, and you've got a perfectly straight uh, cut. And I'm going to show you a couple other like really quick, easy things to do. So this is just a little S cut here. You got a and perfect sized <laughs> parallel cut. That's exactly. what's genius. And then like a little curve. Yeah. So I'm sure, you know, your mind just starts to, you know, go crazy with all the different types of cuts that you could do. And exactly. I just have this set at one width, but you can make it, it will go as wide as 15 millimeters and you can close it all the way tight. I don't know why we would do that. Um, and the, here too, when you're cutting out this kind of piece, if you can imagine, if you put laid those over different forms, all the different types of shapes you have, three-dimensional pieces that you can make um, when you're working with a little tool like this. I'm just cleaning up the ends here so you can kind of get a sense of how neat and tidy um, these little these little pieces yeah, can that's be. I'm, I know we're having light bulb moments, people watching us I going. I know, I mean, just, yeah. just, you know, so much fun and so many different things that you can you can do with this. Yes, I love you little, <laughs> little tool. And are those the basic X-Acto blades in there? Yeah, I think they're, yeah. they're 11s, yeah. So here I just got a, a few different pieces that I've made uh, using, you, again, I'm showing it off again because you guys all want this, <laughs> using, using the tool. So I have some strips of clay that I'm going to show here in just in just a second, so you can see the different widths that you can do. I oh, and I believe we do have a link for that one as well in the handout. So no worries, get your handout. You'll have a list and be able to find everything. Perfect. This is just some. I think I've got some rose copper here that uh, that that's cut, um, and here is PMC flex clay. I usually have lots of little PMC flex clay pieces already cut and dried. I keep them in a little box so they're handy, and I can grab them up real fast whenever I whenever I'm working on a project. Lining them up there just so you can see the different widths that's just a little sample you know of what you can do the first piece that I'm going to show you is this little piece here which has some resin in it I needed to make some a really good edge I needed it to be the same width I also did the little the little fancy piece on the side and the little bail all cut with that tool no sanding required because when you pull through with that you have the exact width that you require so it really saves an awful lot of time down the road and here's just you know showing you you make your back plate and then you would wrap your your little strip around the back plate attach it go make a really nice seal hold your resin in really well the next piece is I made dozens and dozens of these. I'm a Hadar Jacobson uh, guru. I follow her all the time. So this was inspired from, from her pieces. These are actually steel, but I made them in copper, silver, every metal that there is. Cut out all kinds of pieces. And then they were all exactly the same width. I laid them over all kinds of different forms and I ended up with all kinds of little, little pieces, all kinds of different shapes. And then I just attached them together. But what I didn't have to do was sand because they were all exactly the right oh, perfect. width. Yeah, just from, from a production perspective, we'll just save you so much time and, and you're not wasting your clay because you're not sanding it away and it's disappearing on you, so... Yeah, just love that. Yes, I'm showing it off again. <laughs> another another little piece, this little guy I made, again, inspired by Hadar. It's just a little locket. But what I needed to do here was to make sure that the walls were exactly the same width. So again, similar to, to the piece with the resin, made the back plate and uh, put, you know, attached the walls. Didn't have to sand it down because they were exactly the right width. And you're going to see the same thing on the lid here. I had to, the insert into the lid had to be the, you know, proper depth. And again, just cut it with, cut it with my uh, dual bladed tool there. It's perfect. Attach it simple and on it goes. Yeah. Beautiful little, beautiful little locket. Uh, this is the maximum width that the, uh, 
that the exacto knife will open up to. So that's 15 millimeters. It's just a little cuff, a little child's cuff, but it'll give you a sense of the width um, that you can, uh, you can do. Here I'm weaving. This is a really an old piece and probably maybe not a great example, but again, you can cut all kinds of different widths with this. Uh, your pieces are laid out ready and you can just start, just start to do your weaving. So another simple little, little piece. And what can I tell you coming up next is a band ring and don't we all make them. This is a little spinner ring. So again, you know, it's a quick little cut with the with the exacto knife for the, uh, the the band piece. And I cut the little center piece too. just narrowed the blades in and cut the little center piece and, and put it together. So, you know, it just makes uh, things so much easier, no sanding, perfect width. And in here, I'm just going to show the simplest of simple of all pieces. It's a little piece of copper, cut it with the, you know, the exacto knife, rolled the end up around a straw to make the little bell, did some did some little decorating on the top and voila, you know, I've got this cute little pendant. So, so simple, easy if you're an instructor, uh, you know, teaching your students. So there it is. You guys all want one. You can see mine's well used. Look how dirty it is. <laughs> it I travels mean, with me. It's another genius tool, right? Yep. Uh, for quilling, that's a good idea. Anyone else have some <coughs> questions in there? Thank you, all my wonderful presenters are answering questions as you go along there. Um, yeah, this one sort of blew me away. I was like, oh, of course, a parallel cutter. Genius. Yeah. So right. simple and inexpensive. And will save you lots of time and effort and clay. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. it's great. And I, there is, I'm pretty sure we put the name and I think we put a link in the uh, handout for that one. <laughs> Jennifer said, finally, a tool I already have. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but, you know, always check around. We just try to find links if people are giving a discount or if someone has an affiliate link to use or like that but you know uh, you know you who knows maybe they have it at your local hardware store or local yeah. old-fashioned art supply store so you yeah. never know they probably uh, do i got mine on amazon but okay i'm sure that you can get them in lots of lots of places yeah yeah, yeah. pam that is a fabulous tool thank you for sharing we're excited about your upcoming class thank uh you. we love your necklace. Oh my God, that garden necklace. Also, you mentioned Hadar Jacobson. I'm sure many of you in, in the um, metal clay world know her name, which reminds me, there's some wonderful classes of hers on Craftcast. Mm -hmm. I love her mixed metal hollow beads, uh, her pendant, the slug pendant. I mean, you can see She's a fantastic artist. She really is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, generous too with so generous too with uh with uh, information, Hadar. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's 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 overwhelming. It's very inspiring. So thank you again for that. It's all exciting. Uh, all right. So coming up next now, get ready. Do your seatbelts. Get ready, because uh, Ms. Cindy Pope is going to share some things with us. Now, first off, she's also going to share with us. I don't know how many are familiar with AMCA. What's it stand for again? American Metal Clay Worldwide. Uh, Alliance for Metal Clay Alliance, Artists right. Worldwide. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you, Pam. <laughs> and You're welcome. It's fantastic. You know, I actually am on the board, which I've never been a board person before. Uh, and uh, they have great resources. But what's more important that Cindy's going to show us? They have coming up fine. I'm on now, you guys. So keep it down. Uh, oh, are you talking to your kids? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. I thought I muted myself. <laughs> You're so cute. Um, it, it's the, this is the center conference that's coming up next year. Uh, but um, Cindy's going to show us what you can sign up for that. And then she's going to show us how she used, again, the Silhouette software for another way that she's going to show how to use it for laying out um, the conference material. But I'm going to tell you that I could have used that when I just set up my um, uh, metal smithing shed instead of pushing something in place. Oh, look, it doesn't fit and then having to move things. So if that interests you, you're going to love this. So thank you, Ms. Cindy, for always being fantastic with some new information for us. And we can we can also thank Pam Feindahl because she and I are dear friends and she's responsible for me teaching because she's the one who first encouraged me to do it. But she also is the conference committee chair. Right. And as a friend, she asked me if I wanted to volunteer. So um, she kind of is the inspiration behind this. It's, I think we're all really Thank just you, one Cindy. person. We're all we just one are. person. Yeah. 
Well, we all support each other so wonderfully in the community. Exactly. It's all lovely. All right. So here are some little gifts you made for teachers. Right. Allison asked me what I've been doing, and I haven't been doing a whole lot. I've been working a lot on AMCA, but um, I always do teacher's gifts every year. So this is a two-sided lentil. I also did little uh, one and a quarter inch earrings using a font of my granddaughter's handwriting for her teacher, which we, um, the January 21 Fun at One talks about that. Oh, right. So, if you want to make your own fonts. Yeah, go look at that. Right. That's a freebie. So. And so I also have a heat transfer vinyl class and I made masks for the little granddaughters um, because they're back at school. And you show that on, well, I don't even remember what. Uh, it's, a heat, it's a heat transfer vinyl class. I think it'll be in the list of okay, my classes. Right. It will be. And here's little Rowan with her. She wanted an R on her um, mask so people would be learning her name in her class. But the big thing I've been working on because I don't have a lot of energy, but I signed up to work on the center conference and um, I'm doing a lot of different things. It's a beautiful conference. Could you um, pause just for a mm -hmm, second? Mm -hmm. So we have um, 12 workshops, pre and post conference, and then we have 24 presentations over the three day conference from all different artists. And it's May 18 through 24. So it we're I had no idea how much planning went into a conference. My now first do. time doing it. <laughs> now I do. Um, but one of the main things I'm working on is um, logistics and layouts. So let me go to the center website. Just give you a little. And let me say just one thing. So if the question comes up, obviously they'll follow the protocol <laughs> for whatever happens at center. We don't know what the protocol will be for. Um, what are they called? CDC. Did I say the right initials? That, that's right. Uh, uh, but it'll all be handled. So, you know, yeah, we've done probably four different scenarios. Right. And so we're, we are ready, um, to ready to look at everything, but we really have to get closer to the um, time because we don't have a crystal ball as we all know. Right. So um, there's a beautiful website. We have some really great technical people in the AMCA group. So they put together a beautiful website and it will tell you all about center. I'm going to go over real quickly what, the basics are, but there's a tab for everything. So it includes your meals, which is wonderful when you're at the workshop, if you sign up for one or the presentations. Um, we have 24 presentations where people kind of chose what they thought was interesting and new. I love this type of thing because it really piques my um, creativity. We have a gala evening, Look at which will be Pammy's. a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Pam will be there, I'm sure, with the best fascinator in the room. And we have something called Artists Inspiring Artists, which is little mini classes on Friday night. We also have a maker's market where you can purchase things from your instructors and presenters. We're really excited. We have a curating group who's putting together a beautiful metal clay exhibit. I'm very excited to see what, what they do. And lots of other fun activities. Um, so we hope you're ready to start reconnecting with friends Yay. and uh, sign up for the center conference. But let me show you what my little part, one of my little parts has been. And we're going to go to the venue. And the venue is a really pretty um, double tree hotel in Pittsburgh, which we thought was kind of centrally located. That's why we chose it. And they have a giant conference center. And my job is to fit our conference into their conference center. So I, we started actually with graph paper, but I'm gonna give you a peek behind the curtain because here's what we're doing now. So here's the conference center. The left side is the social side where we'll be eating and having our vendors. The right side is classrooms and presentations. So here is the um, social side. We have uh, Sintra Lounge, which is where we get to hang out and see the beautiful exhibit. We're going to have a fundraiser, which is really going to be fun, a gala fundraiser. And the salon is where we'll have our welcome reception and all our meals. And we have a vendor hall. But what we're sending to the vendor is going to be per scale models, because obviously we want them to do exactly what we want. Mm -hmm. We also have workshop shop and presentation rooms. So for every night, it's changing. So Friday is going to be the maker's market and the artists and artists, and all the other days are going to be presentations. So for each room, I actually have what's changing each day. And, and when you did this all in Silhouette software, right? I did. And we're going right. to go to the so software in just great. a second. Yeah. This is just pictures of my files. But to give 
somewhat exactly what you want it to look like it's great. is really important because we we are trying to troubleshoot ahead of time. Right. So we want the hotel to know exactly what we're expecting of them and when. So here's my actual spreadsheet in the Silhouette software. And we did a million classroom setups. <laughs> And, you know, now we've actually assigned the teachers to the room. So I'm going to just show you one. And this is Karen Trexler's and she's got 10 students. And you see, I have some little notes on there about the number of chairs and the number of tables. Mm -hmm. So let, I'm going to go to a separate um, room. And I want to tell you, if you are not on site, get a picture or a two scale layout. We did a lot of planning before we had this picture. And guess what? There's a little bump out. There's also a beautiful built-in countertop. One is good and one is a little troublesome. Okay. So um, that's really important to, if we're not on site and obviously everybody wasn't flying around the country. So we, but um, we now feel like we have a very good handle on the exact layout of the room. So let me show you how I would make this room and how I would set up the classroom. So everybody's going to give you a table or you'll go in and do your own measurements. So it's 26 feet by 24 feet for this particular room, which is the Thompson room. So I'm just going to draw a square. It doesn't matter the size of the square right now. I like to change the color to black and I like to thicken up the lines so you can see it for this presentation and so my old eyes can see it. I'm also going to go on the right hand side to the page setup. What I've done is every one inch I've set to 10 different divisions. So I can, every red square is a 10 by 10 area. Okay. Now you could do any kind of, you could do half size, but I, 10 is easy and you'll see why when we start putting the measurements in and you can always expand the whole thing later. So, um, but I, it, putting it in is really easy if you've got it set to 10 spaces and all my other ones are set to that. So how do I do it? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 2.6, which is 26 divided by 10. And that math we can still do regardless yes, of age. Without a calculator. <laughs> 24 feet divided by 10 is 2.4. And I hit enter and voila, it shrinks down. But we're going to check that and I do, I do a lot of checking with my work because I can, I can be wrong often, more often than I used to when I was a little bit younger. So uh, every red square is 10 by 10. So I'm going 10, 20, 24, 10, 20, 26. So I know it's correct. Mm -hmm. So all I have to do now is work on that little cutout. So I have done all my furniture um, ahead. So I'm going to take the little counter and move it over because I know that bump out is attached right at the edge of that counter. And the bump out is actually six by two. So I'm making a little square again. Don't have to make the square perfect because you could just go right up and say six divided by 10 is 0.6. And that's, 0 0.2. That's, it's great to be able to just type in your measurements. It really is. I used to do it a really, the really hard way. And I've learned, you know, I learn more every time I open up the software, but that, that one in particular makes it so easy. So you can see, I got the red box a little over the black one. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take, click on the box and just make it a little bit longer. I can count six boxes to make sure it's right. And then what I do is I select it. I hit the shift key and I select the black box too. And I use something really, really cool. It's called subtract. Oh, look it. There's the bump oh, out. Great idea. Great idea. So now I'm not going to put a table where there's a wall <laughs> when great I'm planning idea. my classroom, which trust me, uh, we had that <laughs> before we knew about our little bump out, but the countertop is beautiful. I mean, having a built-in countertop is really cool. So I do all my furniture ahead of time. Karen's using six by um, 2.5 feet tables. So I do the same thing. I'm just going to show you one because we are a little short on time. So I'm doing 0 0.6 and 0 0.25, which is going to be six by two and a half. Now I want to give you a little silhouette tool th idea. You can, if you fill something with color, it's easier to move it around. Now you could fill, if you were putting a rug in a room, you could put the rug pattern in there. As Mag showed you, you could do a million things with yeah, color. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you can actually put your couch pattern in there, your couch color. It, it's really helpful. And Mag's is a color whiz. I'm not. So this is very helpful. 
So what I need is I have 10 students, so I need five tables. So I'm just going to replicate and just moving, uh, hitting it four times to get five. The instructor needs a table too. And I broke my rule because my rule is when I make a component, I always make a copy. So those of you who take my classes know that we keep our components. Allison even knows that. Yep, I do. <laughs> to the left. So, um, so I've got all my tables and it's like, well, how, how am I going to move these around the room easily? So um, there's a couple different ways to do it. The first way is we go to the replicate window, which is a little, or the transform window. And it's a little window that has all kinds of things. One of the things it has is rotate. So you can rotate your things all the way around in a circle. You can also take the little green, um, button and move it, but I prefer to have it be more exact. So I use rotate usually. So I'm just flipping it around until it's moved the right way. And you can see that your feet. So um, I, I'm wanting about three feet from the wall because I know your chairs will be tucked under the tables when you're working. Um, we're thinking that that's gonna be good. And then I'm going to put all the tables around. And obviously the instructor doesn't go there. I, I grabbed the wrong table. But you can see how quick it is to move them around. Yeah. And since we did, I cannot tell you how many setups um, would have just taken us forever. And we would have been erasing our graph paper and it yeah. just would have been horrible. Yeah. Oh, so you're making fun of me, Cindy, for my yeah. graph paper no, and my no, eraser. I, and I, my would tape, my I would never tape. do that. <laughs> I was so happy when Cindy did this. Thank you, Cindy. You, you know, I am, I think laziness is the mother of invention and you just must do things the easiest way ever because then you can be creative in all the rest of your I'm time. I'm with you. I agree. <laughs> so we're going to make Karen kind of sideways so everyone can see her. And that's how we're doing our setup. Now, I also am putting equipment tables and things in there, but what it will do is the instructors will actually see this ahead of time. So they'll have a visual of what their classroom, as soon as the hotel approves all of them. But um, I feel like it, it's really so helpful for us because you could say I want um, 15 tables in there. Well, the original tables they gave us were one and a half feet wide. We know as metal players, we've got a lot of stuff. So one and a half was not going to work. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, uh, come on. That was genius. I, do you, I've been reading over here. Beth just said she used that software to design to scale her kitchen and her bathroom remodels and her contractor loved it. Yeah, because anytime you have really good concrete plans ahead of time, it helps everybody involved in the process. Right. We're doing little girls are getting bunk beds and we're going to do their room. Uh, I mean, sure. it's like always helps a lot to uh, have that type of thing. All right. I just want to show back here to our website. I want a round of applause for all that brilliant presentation, right? I mean, I know so many people are inspired and all of your coupon codes and uh, don't forget the one for Craftcast. I love Tool 17. Go get their classes. Uh, right here, you can see if you come to the site, here's all the new live webinars. But then if you want to go see and you want to take software, uh, Silhouette software, and you want to see Cindy's, all of her classes, just go into instructors, click on anyone's name, Pam, Cindy's, and right there are all of their classes. So you can scroll through if you're confused what to get. Cindy, tell everyone if they want to start with the software, which one do they get? Well, I would do um, getting uh, to know the Silhouette version four. Also, if right you now. take any one of Mags's class, you're, she's going to teach you like the first class I took on um, her first class using the Silhouette. I learned right. so much about the software. So anytime you're doing a project, I'm not a big, uh, I don't do canes, but that cane class was really amazing to watch. Yeah, yeah. Well, because you get inspired in how you can use it for other things. That's what's the yeah. class. Here are Mags's class. Just go to any instructor and you can type in their name and find out um, all their different things. There are so many great classes. I know it's my company, but I'm not any of the, well, I teach one little class, but the teachers are phenomenal. You can just play forever taking okay. classes just how it is. I mean, they're all great. Let me just show off while we're just here to finish up. Any last questions too? You got inspired. I'm so glad. I like when people get inspired. That's the point. Um, Pam's classes. There's even a duo class between Pam and Cindy Pope. Um, Pam East and Cindy Pope. On uh, They used the curio machine to cut their metal clay and enamel and 
you know, they just well, are. Pam, Pam and I did a little trade. We did. And I it was taught her so to good. <laughs> use the silhouettes software, and she oh, taught right. me to use uh, enamel. And you know, she's an she's already an amazing designer. So she's a, <laughs> was a sophomore whiz, but she is having a lot of fun. So we designed the piece in my class, and then she showed how to enamel it. And even though I've taken enameling in person from her, this class is amazing. That Champlevé enameling. Right here. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, you got the wrong one. It's the, it's, it's this the, one here. It's that one. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, they're all amazing. The, we cut but that that's the, the one silhouette. you cut. Right. That was one yeah. that uh, the metal Cindy clay was cuts act. out. Yeah. She shows how to do all of the metal clay with the silhouette. And then right. I showed how to do, how to enamel it. Right. And you don't have to take it to a piece. You could just use it to create your own design. And then like Meg said, cut it out of paper. Um, you really don't need the machine to use mm -hmm. this amazing software. Mm -hmm. Which is great. Yeah. And a lot of times the um, it's easier just to do it by hand than it is to set up the machine and get everything attached. And, you know, the machines are great if you're doing production work or if you have like a really intricate cut right. um, that you just don't want to try and do with your hands. But a lot of times the software is all you need. Right. Yeah. No, it, yeah. they definitely can stand alone, which is really cool. I just want to show her is also Cindy Holt. Um, she has two fun things, but there's the jelly plate print and give that a try. That is so much fun. Uh, and like I said, just go up here into instructors. Oh, let me show you guys where your um, handout is. Yeah, and then we'll thing. end with that. Um, go into. OK, so because it, this is what your library looks like. Obviously, I have everything in my library because it's my site. Uh, but when you go into your library, you'll see that this is where you registered right there. Register here, right there. Downloads. There's the handout. If you click that, the handout will come up. You can download it to your desktop. Uh, but there you go. Uh, and then you've got your code for the 20% off. You've got Mags's classes, the Silhouette software. All of these have all the links that you're looking for, plus their classes on craftcast.com. So it's all in one place for you guys right there. Uh, all the new upcoming classes, it's links galore. So check it out that way. Uh, and then the video will be up there um, soon. All this will change out. The downloads will stay. But um, I say 24 hours, but it's much faster now because everything's faster online. Uh, that the uh, video will get up there. So again, a big applause to all of you wonderful, wonderful uh, presenters. I'm inspired, so I know you all are too. Uh, Pam, you put the code in there, great, for Metal Clay Findings. Uh, it's, it is also in the handout. I'm pretty populous. Um, you love, this was a kick in the butt you needed. Good, Katie, that's what we like to hear. Everyone, I look forward to seeing you. Come join us if you're Metal Clay Come join us in two weeks and do this hinged metal cuff. And look how that metal clay is draped in there. Anyway, Tracy Beautiful. Spurgeon is another. That's yeah. incredible. Beautiful. It's incredible. She's another genius uh, teacher as well. And I'm sure you could adapt it to another kind of clay or something. That like could that. be polymer clay in there very exactly. easily. Yep, I yep, know. Yep. That's why I just said that for you. So, You're so sweet. I know. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming. Any questions or something you didn't get? Um, yes, there'll be a replay of the event. I see Pam is already typing something. Just You'll just go to your um, uh, your library and you will see the recording in there or a little mini file that you can download. How many people, Just I just want to do one little thing for me. How many people in here registered through the craftcast.som site? Just put yes, 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 or whatever. Because uh, I'm pretty sure that the major, yes. OK, good. OK, good. Um, Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, that's how we did it. So because that way, it'll automatically be in your library. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a faster, easier way to do it. So that's why we're just trying that way from now on. So I'm so glad. Thank you again uh, for coming. And uh, I send you all a big hug. Please stay healthy and happy and creative until we meet again next time. A big kiss. And thank you, all you ladies who came on and presented. You know I adore you all. Thank, thank you, you for having us, Allison. This was so much fun. Oh, good. Fun. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you.